Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of what every parent should know about video games and today's topic, consoles. Let's get started. You may be asking what are consoles, or you may already know. Either way, a console is pretty simple. It's a pre-made computer for the express purpose of playing video games. That's it. There are three major companies that create video game consoles today in today's market. Uh, Google is trying to push into that market coming this November of 2019. However, until they've done that, we're not going to focus on Google. If they successfully break into the market, uh, we'll come back and do another video about them. Now, those three major companies I talked about, they are Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, of course. Before we jump in and talk about those companies and their consoles, I just wanted to clarify an acronym you're probably going to hear a lot of today in this video, and it's called IP, Intellectual Property. When you hear that, just know it means games that are unique to that company and console and cannot be played on other consoles. We'll start off with Microsoft and what their console is. Microsoft's current console is called the Xbox One, and it is the third generation of Xbox available to the public. Now you may be asking what a generation is. It's pretty simple. It just means that they have released two other Xboxes prior to the Xbox One. You may be thinking, wait, the third generation of Xbox is called Xbox One? Yes, it is. And we're not going to get into the names of the others because they'll just confuse things even more. The Xbox and Microsoft have access to online play. It's a great feature. All of the consoles now have that. However, it does require a paid subscription known as Xbox Live to access. Another great feature of the Xbox is its actual controller. It looks like this. Uh, the controller feels really good and a lot of people really love the Xbox controller. I would say it's probably the favorite controller among all of the consoles. Another great feature that was only announced, I mean, it existed before, but they added something to this feature this year, which is the Xbox Game Pass. The Game Pass is fantastic. First of all, as soon as you subscribe to it, you get access to over 100 games for free in the sense that you do have to pay a subscription fee once a year or monthly. However, you get access to all of these games. And Xbox just came out with fantastic news saying that any new IP to Xbox will be available day one on release date in the Game Pass, which is fantastic news for people who love to play Xbox. Xbox does have a few IPs like Halo and Gears of War. I would say that's also where Xbox is weak. Uh, is that they have less IPs that are hugely popular than the other two consoles. The Xbox One is great for all ages. It really is. There's a lot of games available for all ages. However, I would say that its most popular and uh, most wanted titles are probably more teen to adult age titles. The next console we're going to talk about is made by Sony. And Sony is on its fourth generation of console, and the Sony PlayStation is called the PlayStation 4. A lot less confusing than the generation names of the Xbox or even the Nintendo. So thank you for that, Sony. Sony also offers an online subscription that you have to pay for in order to pay in order to play with your friends online. They do have a subscription that you can access where you get access to a bunch of games. However, they do not include the newest up-to-date titles like the Xbox Game Pass does. At least not anywhere near release date. They may include them down the road, but not on release date. Where Sony is strong is that they have a lot of in-house developers, in-house game studios. They have created a massive number of popular IPs, such as God of War, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, The Last of Us, and the list does go on, there's quite a few, that win major awards, a lot of time winning Game of the Year awards. And finally, Sony has something that none of the other consoles have, which is a relatively low barrier of entry into VR. And their VR is great. It's not the best on the market, but for the price, it's outstanding. As for the appropriate ages for the PlayStation, it's a lot like the Xbox. 
It's a lot like the Xbox. It has games appropriate for all ages. However, like the Xbox, most of the games are geared towards teens and adults. Now, most of those watching are going to know the next company. After all, they are the longest lived company of the three major ones in the console sphere. And you guessed it, Nintendo. Nintendo, for a long time, was the powerhouse, you could say, of consoles. However, that slowly changed as their vision as a company changed. And let me explain. The N64 had stunning graphics, uh, cutting edge technology for graphics. And then it kind of graphically, things went kind of downhill from there. The, you had the GameCube, which was great. Then you had Wii which did not keep up with the second and third generation from Xbox and Sony. And then now you have uh, the Nintendo Switch, which graphically does not compare to the other two companies' consoles. However, their direction changed. They went for accessibility over power. And what do I mean by that? Well, the Nintendo Switch can be docked and played on a big screen TV, or it can be taken off the dock and played anywhere, literally, on a plane, on the bus, wherever you want to play it, you can play it. I mean, I've got one right here. It is tiny. That is the size of the Nintendo Switch minus the controllers. And there's an even smaller one called the Nintendo Switch Lite. And it's powerful for the size. It doesn't fit as much computing power, obviously, as an Xbox that's like, you know, this big or a PlayStation. But it does do a lot for the size it has. Another major strength of Nintendo that comes from its years of being operational, years before any of the other companies were, and that is a huge, massive, staggering number of IPs, such as Mario, Super Smash Brothers, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, Metroid, Donkey Kong, Star Fox, and the list goes on. There are so many. Now, Nintendo does have an online subscription requirement as well, if you want to play online. Uh, but it is the cheapest out of all of them. In fact, if you have multiple consoles, like let's say I have two or three, or in my case, I have five switches, you can get the Family Pass. And the Family Pass will allow up to eight switches online. Even that is cheaper by about half of the other two subscription services. So that's a fantastic bit of news if you're looking. The console itself is also cheaper than the other consoles. And of course, I've provided a link with detailed descriptions on all the consoles below. So you can find a link for Xbox, for PlayStation, and for the Switch if you'd like to learn more. Now this video was made for the purpose of giving you kind of a 10,000 foot view of the consoles. If you're interested in learning more and you want me to do maybe more opinion oriented video of which ones I like best and for what reasons put it in the comments down below and I will be sure to do that video for you however the next video in the series will kick off what I would call a mini series within the series which is kind of like a game review you could say however it's more about getting the details of the game as quick as I can to you we talked about in our ESRB video about ratings like M and then if you flip over the box you can find out more information about why it's rated M. However, I'm going to do the nitty gritty of playing through games for you and I'm going to let you know with even more detail what is the content in those games. I'm also going to talk about why kids love the games. So stay tuned for that next one. I'm not going to tell you what the game is. You'll just have to watch it next week.